Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. I'm always trying to share tips, tricks, help share anything that I've learned editing with these different products to help you um, hopefully incorporate that into whatever uh, you may be trying to do with your photos. So today I'm in Luminar AI, and if you've seen any of my previous videos, and I've got a playlist here about Luminar AI, you will know what I'm about to say, which is, hey, the product is in beta. This is still a beta copy. It's due out um, hopefully soon, hopefully before Christmas, but I don't have an exact date. But um, because I have a beta copy, they've allowed us to share some of the things about the product just to help you better understand what it is, what's coming, how to use it. And so I thought what I would do is talk about masking in this video because I've had a lot of questions about it and there are um, some changes and I wanted to kind of go through that. But one of the biggest questions I've had is people are saying, hey Jim, I understand masking is gone. I don't want just templates uh, to automatically apply to my photos and not have any control over it and not be able to mask. And that stuff is not true. You do have the ability to apply templates and that is, it operates kind of like a look or a preset in that it will apply an edit to your photo, but you don't have to accept it and you can skip it entirely. So there's that. Um, as far as masking goes, uh, there is one change and that is, and you've probably heard this already, luminosity masking is not in Luminar AI. Now, just as I did videos in Luminar 4 showing you how I incorporated luminosity masking into my workflow to help me do certain things. I will look for ways to use the tools and all the stuff in Luminar AI to help you edit your photos even without luminosity masks. And so um, I'll be working on that and sharing tips and tricks as I go. But one of the questions I've had is just that, hey, masking is, is gone, Jim. Uh, it looks like everything that you apply applies globally and you don't have that kind of control but that is not true. You do still have masking. You have brush masking, gradient masking, and radial masking. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that in this example. And again, we're in beta, so everything isn't complete, and some things may change. Just wanted to clarify that. So let's hit it. Here's a photo. I'm just gonna, by the way, I did not use a template. So I was in catalog, and I came over here to edit, uh, skip templates entirely. And all I'm doing is just kind of bumping up the photo with Enhance AI using this Accent AI slider, which I just adore. This is not, by the way, a complete edit. This is a masking demo. So I just wanted to point that out that you may or may not like or agree or whatever with what I do to the photo. That's okay. Um, I'm not really trying to say, here's how I'm editing the photo. I just want to demo the tools. So um, there's Enhance AI, or I should say Accent AI. And I'm going to go to Structure. So if you've seen my Luminar 4 videos, you know when I have skies and water, I like to kind of create negative structure, which is going to the left and softening that up. And I'm going to go kind of far just to exaggerate the effect. But if I turn this off, you can see that, especially in the sky, there's a little bit of texture in those clouds. And when I turn it back on, you can see they're a lot more puffy and kind of squishy and soft looking. And that's because I basically took structure away. However, it's of course applying across the entire photo because it's been applied globally. So how do you mask? Well, if you see this little icon here, it looks a little bit like the head of a spray paint can. Uh, if you click on that, you get the masking menu for that tool. So even though layers are gone, and by the way, I'm not getting into the whole local adjustment masking tool, which kind of replaces layers and it works great and I'm having fun with that, but I'll share it when I can. They've asked us not to in the short term because it's about to change and I think fairly significantly. So I'm just kind of holding off from diving into that until I feel like it's closer to being what it's really gonna look like. In other words, I don't want your expectations to be set in one way and then be uh, completely uh, different when it launches. So anyway, you click on that, you still have this ability to apply masks per tool, right? So you can come in here, as you saw, I click on the little masking icon and I've got three options, paint mask. Paint mask, by the way, is what you uh, in Luminar 4 knew as brush mask, right? So paint mask is that. Radial mask allows you to make a radial and gradient mask allows you to draw a line. On paint mask, which is the one that it defaults to, you can see here you have the paint icon and then the erase icon. So if you paint it in and then need to change it, you just go back and erase it. So I'm gonna go back to paint. You can choose your radius, right? Larger or smaller. Softness, which impacts um, the, the gradient zone between that center circle and the outer circle. Uh, I tend to go a little bit softer, which gives a little bit uh, more gradual uh, fade at the edge. And then opacity is just how uh, visible is it, right? So, um, but in this photo, I'm actually gonna use a gradient mask. 
in which case those other options don't appear because all you're doing is you're clicking and dragging a gradient just like you did in Luminar 4. So you can do that and then uh, I'm probably gonna squish this gradient a little bit, squish is a technical term, uh, and just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of hacking here to be honest, but there you go. I've applied that gradient mass, so now my softening or negative structure is just applying above that. So if I turn that off, you'll see more texture in the skies, and if I turn it back on, you will see softness in the skies, and nothing else is affected below where that gradient went. Now, uh, you have those three options as I showed, uh, but you've also got these three dots. These three dots are not yet turned on. I'm guessing that that's gonna be where you can probably copy a mask, paste a mask, uh, maybe view mask, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's in beta, so there's nothing that happens when I click that, as you can see. So again, that'll change, but I just wanted to point out the masking option. So in this photo, I might come in next and say, well, I really want some details in that, uh, like the boats and some of that seawall kind of thing, whatever you call it, the concrete structure over there. So I'm gonna drag the details to the right, I'm gonna get my paintbrush icon uh, or masking icon. And again, it defaults to paint mask. Uh, I'm gonna be in paint and my radius, I'll just use something like that. And then I just come in here. And as you can see, when you paint, it provides the masking overlay. And this is a sloppy job, just to be clear. But as I paint over it, you can see it's basically showing the, uh, the mask on the, uh, on the photo. Now I let go, I'm gonna increase with my right bracket key to make that a little bit bigger and that way it won't take me as long so I don't have to keep trying to think of something to say while I'm talking to you and trying to do this edit job. So, and now I'm gonna shrink it back. I'm just gonna hit this boat a little bit. Again, sloppy masking job. We're friends, you're not gonna hold it against me. Uh, but there you go. I've now painted those details adjustments into just those areas uh, and the tools are there. If you wanna hide that menu, you can just click the paintbrush icon to hide it. Now notice there's a little dot above the paintbrush icon. That means the masking has been used. If you go look at structure, you can see there's something, uh, a dot above it there as well, right? That is the same way as the little dot that shows up above these tabs, which indicate something on that tab has been in use. So if I click on pro, there's nothing in use here or on portrait or in creative, but you can see that little dot above essentials because I've only been working on the essentials tab. So uh, that's kind of a quickie, but I wanted to show you that you do have some uh, masking options in Luminar AI. Again, paint mask, which is uh, formerly known as brush mask, gradient mask, which I used here along with a paint mask or brush mask. And then of course you have radial and I'll come back and dive deeper into these as I, uh, you know, as we either get closer to launch or after launch, just to share some more tips and tricks. And as I showed you the masking menu here with the little dots is not um, available yet. So again, we're in beta, things may change and that stuff that I've shown you may change but I'm hoping it's pretty close to being final. My point really here was to show you, you still have masking options, so don't worry. You do have control over the photo. You're not forced to, to use a template and not do anything else. You can go straight to edit as I did here, and you can customize how the edits are applying to the photo based on using the different masking options for that tool. So I hope that helps, gives you a little bit of an idea and maybe some comfort that you're not giving up and losing things that you depended on because I, I brush mask and gradient mask all the time. So um, I'm very uh, happy that these are still here. I wanted to share that with you. And uh, that's another closer look at Luminar AI. Again, still in beta, things may change, but I just wanted to point out some of the masking options and that you can still use per tool or what some people would call per filter masking to help customize the look of your photo and where those edits are applying in the photo. So you have control, it's part of the beauty of Luminar. And that's it, my friends, just wanted to share that update. So I'll be back soon with more stuff about Luminar AI and hope you're doing well, staying safe, all that stuff. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care and adios.